section 10.4, examples 6 and 7. So let's use binomial theorem to do some expansions now. So I notice we have x squared minus 3 all to the fourth power. So we're going to use binomial theorem rather than um, just multiplying it out four times. So first we need to find the coefficients, and then we'll find the powers. So I'm going to use Pascal's triangle. So 1, 1, 1, and then we get 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Remember, I'm just adding to find those. So we're doing a fourth power. Um, the first row is technically considered zero. So I just remember the row by one, two, three, four. That's how I know which power it is. So those are my coefficients. And then my first term will decrease in powers and my second term will increase in powers. So since we don't have A and B, um, this is how I remember it. First term decreases powers and then second term increases. And then we don't have to use the intimidating formula. We can just kind of understand the pattern of it rather than the formula, because the formula is a little scary. So our first term will be 1, and then it'll be x squared to all of the 4s, and then negative 3 gets 0. So my first term is x squared. My second term is negative 3. So then the next one would get 4. x squared is going to go down by 1 power and then negative 3 is going to go up by 1 power. So x squared gets a cubed, and then negative 3 gets 1. So hopefully you find this easier than using the formula. Um, if not, you could try using the formula. Um, but I think a lot of us are probably intimidated by this formula. So I'd rather use the idea of it than use the formula. So my next term will be 6, and then x squared now gets a second power. We're going down by 1. And then negative 3 goes up 1, so negative 3 gets a squared power. And then my next term will be 4 and 1. So 4, x squared goes down one more time to 1. Negative 3 goes up to 3. And then finally we get 1, and then x squared has no powers left, so it gets 0. And then negative 3 has all the powers at 4. So again, notice the powers always add up to 4. That's a way to check our work, and the coefficients are following this pattern. We'll just do some simplifying, but we're pretty much done. So my first term, negative 3 to the 0, is 1. So my first term is just x to the 8th. Um, let's see, we get 4, negative 3, so we get negative 12. x to the 6th. Cool. And now we get 6 and 9 because negative 3 squared is 9. 6 and 9 gives me, what, 54? x to the 4th. And then let's see, negative 3 cubed would be 27, negative times 4. So we get negative 108. And so we get minus 108x squared, because that's the x power. And then negative 3 to the 4th is maybe, I think it's 81. And then x squared to the 0 is 1, so we just get plus 81. So hopefully it's making a little sense. Hopefully, um, hopefully you like this better than the formula. I do, but everyone's different. So if you like the formula, you're allowed to. Uh, but let's try it my way one more time without the formula. So we are using the formula, just not using the formula. So we're going to do fifth power. So let's go ahead um, and do the binomial. Um, do Pascal's triangle, and then we'll do the binomial. So I'm going to go ahead and write it. So 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Um, and then we always start with 1, so then we get 5, we get 10, we get 10, we get 5 and 1. So for a fifth power, these are my coefficients. Again, this is easier than dealing with 5 choose 1, 5 choose 2. I think it's easier. And so our first term, our a, is 2x. And our second term, they're just getting messier. Our a and b are just getting messier, is 1 over x. 
So for um, 2x, the powers go down. For 1 over x, the powers go up. So let's give this a shot. So my first term has a coefficient of 1. And then a gets all the powers. So 2x to the fifth, 1 over x to the 0. And then we'll just keep going. And then we get 5, 2x to the fourth, 1x to the 1. So we're going down by 1 for the 2x. We're going up by 1 for the 1 over x. Plus 10. So I'm just going in order. So 2x goes down to 3. 1 over x goes up to 2. We'll do 10 again for the next 10. 2x goes down to 2. And 1 over x goes up to a power of 3. Again, the powers are always adding up to 5. Before I simplify, at least. Um, we get 5 for the next one. So 2x goes down to 1, 1 over x goes up to 4, and then our final term is a 1. 2x goes down to 0, 1x goes up to 5. And then we'll just simplify each of these. I'll just keep it vertical while we simplify, and then maybe we can make it a little bit better. So 1 over x cancels out, so this would be 2 to the 5th, x to the 5th. Um, what's that? 32x to the 5th? Um, we get 5, and then times 2 to the 4th, x to the 4th, and then 1 over x. So you'll notice there's some canceling out here. So the powers won't add up to 5 in my final result, but they'll add up to 5 before we simplify. So what's that? 2 to the 4th, 16 times 5 is 80. Um, and then 1x cancels out, so x cubed. So this is our last example if you want to try to simplify this without me. Uh, but if you want to watch me simplify, I'll keep going. So we get 10, we get 2 cubed, x cubed, and then we get 1 over x squared. So 2 cubed is 8, so we get 80 again. Um, x's cancel out, and we're only left with a single x on top. Let's see, we get 10, we get 2 squared, x squared, and then we get 1 over x cubed. So we get 40, and then the leftover x is actually on the bottom now, and that's okay. Um, we get 5 times 2 times x, and then 1 over x to the fourth. So I'm going to get 10, and then I get x cubed left over on the bottom. And then my final one, x to the 0 cancels out. We just get 1 over x to the fifth. And those are all my terms. Let's just go ahead and write them as a polynomial, uh, as a a single function. So 32x to the fifth plus 80x cubed plus 80x plus 40 over x plus 10 over x cubed plus 1 over x to the fifth. So this is an expanded form of this without multiplying five terms, right? This would have taken a long time if we multiplied it out. It would have gotten us the same answer, um, but the binomial theorem is a really nice cool shortcut. So let me know if you have any questions.